This is the Hour of Awesome with Robert, Chris, and Steven. This isn't the Hour of Neat, Cool, or Rad. It is all going to be awesome. <laughs> okay, it's the Hour of Awesome. Uh, episode 14. Welcome back. As you can see, we're we're being unofficially sponsored by Android and by Red Bull. Um, yeah, they have no idea. They'd probably sue our asses off. Um, <laughs> Good thing nobody watches this. Huh? <laughs> so it's, uh, it's me, Robert Macy, and I'm here with my co-host, Chris. Hey. And Stephen. That's me. And so uh, it's you. if you watch the video or have astute listening, you may have noticed that Robert, last episode uh, has, well, this episode has gotten much uglier than he was last episode and much fatter. Uh, it doesn't have nearly as cool a voice. So, because uh, we had Jesse step in for me last time. So, I'm back. Whether that's a good or a bad thing, we'll leave that up to you. And Jesse didn't uh, talk a lot, so this, you know, it's probably better than your choice, but, you know. Good. But to be fair, he was like kind of thrown into the last minute too. So uh. yes. <laughs> yeah, he was very cool to step up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He did a good job. Uh, if you like Jesse, you can get more of Jesse on our sister show, uh, Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. Uh, also on just say it. yes, JesterCat.com. Um, oh, and we started something new last time. Uh, a new hand sign, the colon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is that? Six strings and things. A colon. Yeah. Colon. It's, you know, a colon. It's two, one dot above another dot. You know, you've seen them before, right? Yeah, but that wasn't, I was thinking that was some weird gesture for a different kind of colon. Oh, no, no, no. That would be uh, uh, better no, let's not. Let's not go down that path. Let's just, <laughs> let's try to maintain some semblance of professionality here. Yeah, we have no class, man. Uh, all right. All right. Show you think you're on. Yeah. <laughs> the hour of awesome. The hour of yes. awesome. Yes. So, um, Oh, have you guys been following? Uh, do either of you follow Groovy Bruce? Uh, yeah, on Twitter. Sentence, yes. Groovy Bruce is uh, Bruce Campbell's Twitter handle. He goes by Groovy Bruce. So I love. It. He's been just having some of the best tweets lately. So anyway. Yeah, I was going to tweet him when we have uh, episode five posted. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Because that was, uh, I think, the one about him. Yes. yes. And that will be good for him to uh, enjoy or accept our uh, our of awesome award of awesomeness. Um, we have to make sure we, you know, Photoshop with him um, <laughs> receiving it. <laughs> yeah, we'll fake something up. There you go. Um, so, uh, hey, so what have you guys been doing this week? Well, I just got back from my twenty year high school reunion. Whoa. Yeah. What was that? Oh, uh, it was better than i thought it would be <laughs> not that i had low expectations but i've never been to a reunion so i thought it was just going to be a bunch of people you know sitting around staring at each other with nothing really to talk about um because you know you don't see these people in 20 years and uh so what is there to do to talk about but actually it turned out pretty pretty cool um there wasn't as much you know reminiscing of the old days as much as it was just catching up so what have you been doing since high school kind of thing um Any i didn't surprises? have uh yeah, I guess. They were sure. All physics professors. No, no, no. <laughs> just, just one me. Uh, but <laughs> anybody but else no. in your class uh, an academic? Not that I know of. Yeah, uh. it's possible. I mean, I know one that was there. That I'm aware of. We probably had about thirty members of the class, and then their spouses and some of brought their kids. You're so it was class. pretty good. Yeah, it was probably a hundred and sixty oh, something okay. like that. Not big. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, the school, I think the school I went to had like six or 700 students in it, maybe all together. Yeah, maybe. That, that was my class. We had about 650 graduating. They're now, yeah. the high school now, going back 20 years ago, they're, uh, today they're at about 1,000 per year. So, wow. Um, we were, yeah, my, mine wasn't that big. I think we were about 550. Okay. Okay. So, in, I mean, in my class. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I think that, but I think they've gone up. I think there's about 2,000 in the school now over three grades. I see. I remember us starting our class with like 200 students in it. And, you know, but, you know, yeah, people really get knocked up or, yeah, people Max drop Murders. out, whatever. Uh, none that I'm aware of. We um, had one. Yeah. Oh, nice. We actually had an expert. We did class. have a serial. That's a... It wasn't my class, but he actually was a couple years behind me. So that's exciting. 
Oh. That, that okay. interesting class reunion. So what do you do? Well, you know, I cut people with axes. <laughs> you got a full now, page in the annual, which I always thought was kind of weird and twisted. Yeah. I wasn't really all that socially outgoing in high school. Um, oh, I was and, a band geek, man. You couldn't have been worse than me. Band uh, geek and chess club. Science <laughs> geeks are pretty bad. I wasn't socially outgoing, so therefore I didn't have a whole lot of friends. I, we weren't really all that clicky. I mean, I, there were probably clicks, but maybe I was just so far removed from social scene I wasn't aware of it too. Uh, but it just, I wasn't nowhere, I was nowhere near as outgoing as I am now, which is kind of sad because I'm really not all that outgoing <laughs> right now. Um, but the alcohol loosens all that up for you, so you're all set. Yeah, I didn't drink though because I had to drive straight there. It was three hours, and then I was going over to my mom's house afterwards, and I wasn't going to transport alcohol that wouldn't stay cold. <laughs> yeah, that that's the issue. Now, well, pretty much because I always have my so, wife cart my drunk ass around. That's not a problem. So you, you're very <laughs> wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> gas station fried chicken, but buying a beer from the yeah. gas station is gonna be a problem for you. I don't. Uh, I see. It's the problem. I don't, I don't like beer. We talked about this right well, in our drinking right, episode yeah, that yeah, that yeah. came off poorly. Yeah, yeah the worst episode. episode so. <laughs> yeah, yeah me too. Block it out. <laughs> Good reason for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know, I I, I didn't want to go and get like you know go down the street, go to the liquor store, get like a bottle of Jack, and then you know just start drinking out of that because that's bad form. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> straw in there. Yeah, it is. Oh. Well, you know these. Did you went to that? Hoity toity. <laughs> you know, you just want to put that best foot forward at a reunion, right? You know, you get your hair done nice. You can tell I got my hair done nice, right? You know, you you, you got to lose a few pounds. So, you know, did that. And then yeah. I, uh, dude, you have that all. You're all actually together. the one with hair compared to. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But, and then, you know, drinking Would whiskey. Shirt the opposite what, which way are you? I don't it's, know. Uh, up there. Well, oh. for you, he's, he's that direction. Yes. So, yes, that guy. Yes, well done. <laughs> nah, it was a good time. I know, it's great rating. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, cool. Um, Steven? Uh, so I was in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly something or other. And, uh, the city walked, of your brother? I walked around in a square around the city hall over and over and over again. Because uh, I was staying at one side, but I had meetings on the other side and kept eating on the same corner of the same street at like different restaurants over and over again, which was fine. But the uh, the cool thing is I got to see uh, Book of Mormon musical. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, so in case those who haven't heard of it or don't know what it is, that's the one by uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone from South Park, as well as the music by the guy from Avenue Q, if you follow musicals at all. Um, cool. It's fantastic. Uh if you're into musicals and offensiveness, um, <laughs> it's definitely not rated PG or PG 13. It's more akin to the uh, bordering on X for language and only language. Oh. Um, but it was fantastic. Actually, I sat down next to this thing. And we, so it was myself and two of my friends to go see the show and we would planned, but not that far in advance. So we looked for tickets and we could get three tickets either next to each other, but in the nosebleeds or three tickets that were back to back to back. And we're figuring back to back to back. Why not? So we're not going to talk to each other during the show. This should be fine. So I can sit in the back and kick the other guy ahead of me. He can kick the guy ahead of him. It was good. But that invariably meant I was sitting next to somebody, right? And who I was sitting next to were these three 80-something-year-old women. And I know that they're in their 80s because they, uh, one of them graduated from college from Penn State in 1954, uh, mm -hmm. which was puts her in her 80s, unless she was some sort of child prodigy. Uh, and so I'm sitting there thinking, oh, God, I know what this thing's going to be about. It's going to be, you know, lots of language and so forth. Um, they have an entire song about how everybody has AIDS. Um, and <laughs> yes, I, I appreciate the facial gestures there from Robert's good reactions. Um, yes, thank you for that. <laughs> and uh, they're, they're rolling on, and on the ground laughing, too, because it was put together in such a really funny way. It was actually really quite uh, enjoyable. So. Um, if you have an, I don't care if you're not into musicals. I was with two people who I don't think I've ever seen a musical in an actual theater before. Maybe they've seen something on TV, like, you know, Grease or something like that, uh, but would not go see an actual musical in a, uh, theater. Um, I, I've seen a lot, um, but I would say it's definitely worth going if you want to have a good time, laugh. It's great music, a lot of fun. 
Uh, it wasn't they get up and dance like they advertised Mamma Mia because apparently people were very uh, into ABBA or something like that. But uh, <laughs> they all got up and danced. Right that's that's yeah. on their 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 billboards or whatever. It was ABBA get up, you know, uh, dancing in the in the uh, aisle ways and so forth. Well, you know, it's you, you like ABBA, I guess. I, I don't know. I just don't see you know a playhouse being the best place for dancing. Yeah. I can't get nearly drunk enough in a playhouse. Unless, do they serve alcohol? Yes, they do. Oh, then okay, then no problem. Suck so a dancer. I saw my wife and I saw <laughs> Cabaret many years ago in in Studio Fifty Four, and they actually sat you at tables. Um, so we were at like a with bar stools at a table, and they're serving you know drinks right to their seat. So it was definitely interesting. From <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we've okay. lost our host. Our host has now left the building. Well lighting done. change <laughs> what a host fantastic work really enjoy your work there host Rob. yeah you know we're recording a webcast here uh <laughs> well it was getting really dark i figured i better turn the light on <laughs> not sure if it's better for more light with you i, I don't really know but uh i know it's yeah it's not the best <laughs> like it was getting to the point where i couldn't see the keyboard or anything <laughs> Nonetheless, that's why uh, I wandered away. You guys should be used to this by now. <laughs> we had a professional here last week. All right. Yeah, we <laughs> well, <laughs> tough luck, man. <laughs> we dial in uh, Jesse right now. Jesse, save us. Save us. Jesse, save us. <laughs> now, see, if you didn't react, <laughs> nobody on audio would have known. <laughs> this is why we encourage people to watch our show. Don't just <laughs> yeah. listen to it, watch the show. All the things you're missing, like the facial gestures and the androids <laughs> dancing. Over the Android. I, don't really I think that dude, he looks cool. <laughs> so I don't have my birthday card this week. <laughs> Thank God. Packed everything up. So, anyway, this sounds like an uber fancy place to go see a show yes. if they have tables. Yes. Thank you for the thing we can't read. Appreciate it. Nerd. Nerdtacular 2013. There you go. There's a lot of my dating life summed up in that mouse pad. <laughs> Are you the alien or the robot? Or what, I'll on? just leave it at that. Yeah. Right. The court says I can't talk about it. So. so you're into that whole Japanese tentacle thing. All right. <laughs> yeah, like you said, he's legally mandated not to. Carry on. An NDA. Oh, man. Anything from you, Robert? Uh, since we've lost all train of thought, you so got the house away from house. my conversation. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, so I'm moving. Um, so two episodes from now, I will no longer be in the wooden loft. I will finally be in an appropriate Jason. studio man cave. Uh, so that, that'll be fun. Um, yeah, it's going to shave an hour and a half a day off my commute. So uh, super happy about that. Yeah, that's about it. So moving sucks. <laughs> moving does suck. Do moving sucks. Years, then, man. Yeah, it doesn't matter yeah, if it's, not. you know, it's 900 miles or if it's just across town. Moving sucks. Yeah. So um, so I, I've misplaced the bumper for super happy fun time. So I'm going to play this as our bumper today. Major Dallas, you were selected for a mission of the utmost. <laughs> Save the world. There you go. <laughs> Thank you for that. Last we probably could have used that with the first. <laughs> we broke out the guitar, so we're staying really professional here. Yeah. So, uh, super happy, fun time. It was my week to pick a movie this week, and so I did, and I picked um, Boon Raku, which was a movie from 2010 that I first saw. I don't know, about a year and a half ago or something like that. And I thought, hey, this is kind of cool. Um, the story is very... Story? Yeah. Oh, there's a story. But it's it's right. like uh, generic, right? I mean, it's a stranger or strangers in this case come to town. And uh, one guy seeking vengeance. The other guy seeking a card game at the start, right? Yeah. And uh, so the story is whatever. It's There's not much there in terms of originality. What I think sets this movie apart is the the filming, and oh, the visual sort of, styles astounding, man. The visual that that that's why I wanted to recommend this, to see this movie. It's not for the story, but the way it's shot and the, like you said, the visual style. It's almost done like a comic book. You can think of that movie from the '90s, Dick Tracy, but yes. darker. Yeah, 
Um, and in a way, it's almost done like one of those pop up books that Woody Harrelson, the bartender, makes. Yep. I don't know if you made that connection or not, but it's very similar to that kind of cartoon yeah. style. Oh, dude, best movie ever. Had Hellboy, had had bartender from Cheers. Uh, <laughs> Playing a bartender. Playing yeah. A bartender, yes. Demi had the Moore. dude from Hollywood Homicide. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, the better, the better one, the Bruce Willis one. Lucky number eleven. Oh yeah, yeah. Which I actually thought he was pretty good in. Yeah. Uh, they had. Okay. Going to derail you right away. What the hell purpose did Demi Moore serve, or any of her storyline? I don't know. I, I think that there was a connection between um, her, the bartender, and the bartender. No, I got uh, that, but it was just. Oh, it was just edit that out. Better movie. It could have been. It could have been removed. Yeah, it could have been removed, and it would have been no change to the movie. Maybe she. And then the the dude who uh, wore the hat with a scarf. That guy. Oh, the killer number two. Yeah, yeah, he was good. Was he the dude from Enterprise? No. Um. No. No. Uh, and I forgot. Train spot. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. For um, some reason, he 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 just kept reminding me of the dude who played the engineer on Enterprise. Oh no, that's Simon Pegg. Um, this guy is no, 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 Ke- no, no. The TV Kevin- show Enterprise. Oh, oh, that one I don't know. This guy's name's Kevin McKidd, Kevin? and okay. he was he did a voice from like you said. Uh, well, he did Train Spotting. He did a voice in Brave. Um, he was in a couple of other lesser known movies, um, Dog Soldiers, uh, Kingdom of Heaven. That's actually not a lesser known movie. People know that one. Grey's um, Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy's been on. Um, Rome. Yep, that was actually he. I, that's the part that I remember him from most. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just thought what sets this movie apart was the visuals, and that's why I wanted um, folks to watch it. You should have told me that beforehand, then I could have actually turned off the sound. It would have been more enjoyable. <sighs> now, see, I watched it with the sound off and just subtitles. Okay, because um, I mainly watched it while holding my daughter at night. On my phone. So the oh, visual okay. style was really apparent on your. No, actually, it was because I, you know, had it right here. Mm-hmm. So I, um, <laughs> and it it was that it was a great show, man. I I love the way it looked. Um, dialogue was wooden as hell, um, but it was oh, just a beautiful film. Yeah. yeah. I, I like the guy get over how pretty it was. Yeah, I like the guy who played Yoshi. I thought he did a good job. Um, his name is uh, Gact, G A C K T, and apparently did some rock star. Yeah, well, and it turned out from what I was reading some reviews online, one of the reviewers had mentioned that uh, when the movie was released at a film festival, um, Yoshi, the guy who played Yoshi, got the biggest round of applause. Okay. That uh, people apparently enjoyed him, his performance the most. I thought it was good. What did you think, Steve? Uh, I really wanted to punch the screen after a while um i will say that i was more focused on the dialogue and the story and it was not fun for me um it well was, dialogue and the story suck so yeah yes, that was <laughs> kind of what i was thinking and from a martial arts perspective um you know they did a lot of interesting things you know they had uh, number two he did some you know that beginning he did like that thing with like the cane or whatever the hell he was using to defend everything um, yeah so it was a very different sort of a kind of style that they dealt with uh you know obviously they had the comic book uh bubbles that would pop up on the screen and that kind of thing mm-hmm. i thought that was interesting um but again i watched it I, I tend to watch films more for the story you know what what's what's happening um and that definitely was not my favorite part of this film. Uh, it definitely did not bring me into this very much. And I, I don't know. I guess I was reflected. I was about 20 or 30 minutes in the film. And I'm like, oh, my God, what did Chris give us? And I start doing some searching on this one. And, you know, again, the IMD or the uh, Rotten Tomato ratings is like 16% or something like that. And, which was up, I think, from Maximum Overdrive. So I call this a win. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, compared to some of our films, it beat that one. It beat One or Dead or Alive. Uh, well, I'm, here's a question I got for you, Stephen. There's another film that you and I both like a lot. I don't know if Stephen, if Chris has seen it, The Raid. Oh yeah, Raid's awesome. 
The Raid has no story. The Raid Redemption. It's a video game. Right. But see there, the lack of story didn't get you. And well, here, they were trying it, was it because you didn't expect it to have one? I, well, that one was a video game. And it was very clearly a video game. There wasn't much of in the way of dialogue. There wasn't much in the way of anything. This, there was a lot of dialogue. There just uh, wasn't anything going on. See, to me, I looked at it more as, uh, well, this is why I want all the Demi Moore stuff cut. Because there was nothing going on there. But to me, it was more like watching a uh, ballet. Right? Don't care about the dialogue. There isn't any. Don't care particularly. Uh, well, if there was music, I didn't hear it. <laughs> uh, was there music? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's music. Was it good? Uh, it's exactly what you would expect it to be. Oh, okay. For that kind of... I so mean, throw away. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing yeah. special about the story of this movie. I, I, I totally agree with that. Then I would totally watch this film with sound off. Yeah. Uh, it's To me, it's like a little bit more like watching a Kurosawa film. I don't mm -hmm. speak Japanese. So, and it doesn't particularly have interesting music. So I'm watching and reading, uh, kind of just enjoying the visual style. It reminded me a bit of, although Dick Tracy, I think you're spot on, Chris. Uh, yeah. Ron, there's a Kurosawa film called Ron. It's kind of their version of King Lear. Okay. It has a, also has a very striking visual style. Very, very primary color. Uh, Beautifully shot outdoor scenes. Just a gorgeous film to watch. Um, so to me, it was like this was more like a foreign film that I was watching. Yeah. Because um, I'm getting subtitles and, you know, and watching the screen. Uh, no, I but the, the visually, I, I thought it was fantastic. I think it you got to cut it in half uh, lengthwise because it kind of dragged. There were bits that were. It does. Lame. Yeah. Uh, the whole restaurant thing didn't interest me at all with him and his cousins. Um, Woody Harrelson, you can cut him out. You know, that didn't really add anything. The fight in the rain I didn't particularly like between the two main characters where yeah. they're beating the crap out of each other as their way of bonding. But you take some of the things like the entry, the opening scene, the prison scene that was shot from like this cutout view as you watch him go down the levels. Uh-huh. It's almost like you, you didn't hear this, but it's almost like a video game. The sounds are all like uh, 80s video game sounds. It was? As oh, he's going through. Perfect. Yeah. It would be perfect yeah. for that. Yeah. Uh, the total metric, matrix rip off from when he leaps off the edge of the building. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, the, the little scenes where they, they shot up to uh, the training camp and, you know, some of that kind of stuff. I liked all those bits. Uh, you know, when Hellboy, I know it's Ron Perlman. But when Hellboy <laughs> was in there kind of pontificating, I found that very boring. Mm -hmm. So anytime the action wasn't going on and there was actually you had to try to eke out whatever there was in the way of a story, uh, the film kind of sucked. Yeah. Um, well, the so I give it both told. a 10 and a 1. Oh, yeah. Well yeah. No, I get that. I mean, like the story's been told a thousand times, right? There's nothing. There's nothing new. There's nothing novel to that whatsoever. Well, that One of the things I did... See, one of the things I did like, though, I thought the, the, the drifter uh, was a cowboy without a gun. And so he had fast hands. He was fast draw, but it didn't really, you know, what did it matter? Uh, and then, the, of course, the samurai showed up without a sword. Yeah. And so there were kinds of little things like that that I appreciated. But again, it's, it's a visual movie for me. And that's why I enjoyed it so much. Yeah. I, this isn't a lot of times there'll be movies where I'll watch it and I'll go, oh, my God, that's two years, two years, wow. <laughs> two hours of my life. I'll never get back. Mm -hmm. um, this one, I was glad I watched it. I really was. I, I enjoyed the film for what it was. Um, and I would just love to see, uh, you know, a fast edit. Yeah. You know, the edited highlight reel. Just sort of like Hamlet 2 where I would have just liked to have seen the musical. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, there's just bits and pieces of these films that we've been watching, including ones I picked. I mean, Wanted Dead or Alive should be about a four-minute film. Uh, <laughs> You know, could perfectly capture the essence of that one. Uh, uh, Has this director done anything else? I don't know. Not really. I think there was two other things on IMDb from this director, um, if I remember correctly. I did look it up. Yeah, I'm bringing it up right now. Guy Moshi. He wrote a things. He directed Holly. Yeah, almost nothing. And question mark apostrophe. Yeah, something called Holly. Yeah, in a short. Yeah. 
is in a screenplay to another film as well. Well, he can clearly draw people in. Um, this next film, Grizzly, which is, I guess, came out, just came out, or it's not 100% clear if it's come out already or if he just wrote it or something like that, but that has Piper Parabu, James Marsden, Billy Bob Thornton, Thomas Jane. Um, yeah, this one had a cast of people, you know, as well. But yeah, but see, it's got him as screenplay. The screenplay, I think, was the weakest part of this right, film. Right, right. So that's, I'm wondering whether or not there was an actual... Um, if he directed anything else, because that would be... Yeah, I wonder, who did the cinematography? That's what would be interesting. Because that... For Bunraku? Yeah. Do you guys know an easy way to look that kind of stuff up? Uh, not off the top of my head. Because they don't divide that out nicely like they do with director and writer and stuff. Of course not. That right. Because uh, that was just... Damn, that was a gorgeous film. Yeah. I really That's... enjoyed that style. It really drew me in. I also like the weird fake martial artsy stuff. Like the beginning, that opening scene where he does that half bend over weird stick his ear out you know, thing. Yeah. <laughs> that was just so odd looking. Juan Ruiz Anchia. Well, okay then. Who has done a lot of things going, including Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Oh God, that's a gorgeous film too. Though in completely unrelated style. I mean, yeah. no connection. Yeah, but it's pretty. Um, he did the Phil Spector TV movie on HBO that came out like a year ago. Didn't um, see it. Let's see if anything else here that really pops out at your sort of interesting. Uh, the Jungle Book live action movie from 94. Um, no, so he's uh, been yeah, doing this for a right. long time. Yeah. He's done a crap load of stuff, but none of it's really jumping out. Yeah, a lot Looks of like the Spain, but he's been doing this since the early seventies. Yeah. The uh, estimated budget was twenty-five million for the movie. <sighs> really? I'm yeah. actually kind of impressed. It was that little. Yeah, me too. Um, Those weren't. That was not some. I mean, they aren't A-listers, but that's not cheap talent. Well, not cheap talent. How you manage that though. Yeah, but do you think these people are doing this for scale? No. I also think, from what I'm seeing here on IMDb, that it's possible it came out in South Korea first. Their release date is 30 November 2011, and in parentheses, they have South Korea beside that. Hmm. Wait, that could have been a, around uh, the fact that they got... No, I, I take that back. I'm sorry. They, if you click on the release dates, you can actually see it came out first in Canada, and then almost immediately thereafter the, in the U.S., so it's not a foreign film. I was wondering if it started out as a foreign film. Um, just out of curiosity, but no, it wasn't. Interesting. Well, like I said, um, I thought visually the movie stands out, which is why I wanted to uh, to, to talk about it today. Um, I'm really happy with this one, Chris. I got to tell you, I'm really glad that I watched this Maximum Overdrive. Oh, my God, I wanted to punch you in the face. <laughs> that was payback for um, One of Dead or Alive. <laughs> but I took the collateral damage on that one. That's no good. <laughs> yeah, but you made us watch that Hamlet film. And he enjoyed that one at least. I like so. Hamlet. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. Yeah, Usually okay, I was collateral damage on that one. You know, I think the only one that all three of us have actually even mildly enjoyed was Thin Man. Um, well, you guys... I thought you enjoyed Buckaroo Banzai. No. That's crickets. I was word. okay with it, and I think Chris was okay with it. I wouldn't say it was. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Compared yeah, to your great. other choices, Roberts, it does well. <laughs> Though you did Big Trouble in Little China. Let's be honest, that I think may have been the best film we've watched so far. So. Yeah. But yeah. To be here for my own damn film. <laughs> <laughs> so, had Jesse seen it? A long time ago, but he was able to like actually recall a few things that, uh, yeah. So he was able to contribute to the conversation quite ni nicely. Because that was, oh man, I love that film. <laughs> it's not a good film, but I love that film. Yeah, it's it's one of those. You're right. It's not a good movie, but it's it's fun to watch. <laughs> uh, they uh, they had a fun thing on Reddit the other day. It was, what's the best trilogy trilogy that you can make from three unrelated films? Um, ooh, I like that. It's kind of an interesting notion, right? So you, people would theme off an actor, you know. So what are like sort of three Samuel L. Jackson films that you sort of put together to sort of develop into this? They had a Jack Burton trilogy, 
from Big Trouble. Trouble. He starts there. He ends up uh, somewhere. I can't remember which was what his middle film was, but the last film was uh, Escape from Soldier. Escape from New York. <laughs> excuse me, from New York. So the idea is he starts off as sort of a oh, happy-go-lucky okay. guy, then he loses an eye, and then he does you know that whole thing. Uh, That's why I think it should end with Soldier. Well, Have you guys seen that? It's a horrible yeah. film. <laughs> the, oh yes, I have seen Soldier. As the bad. one that I liked <laughs> the best though was Terminator. Robots come yeah. back to to try to you know uh, make sure that the uh, the rebels or whatever don't stop. Um, then they win. The robots win. It's Matrix, and <laughs> they but the human bodies are the uh, the source. Once the power source is gone, cars. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was good. impressed. I thought that was the really creative way to put these together. So. Cars? That's fantastic. <laughs> oh, I think I heard it. <laughs> so that's good. So, just think awesome. about that next time if you want to put together a theme of movies that we actually do. You know, and then you can have planes after cars as evolution continuing. <laughs> It's like the cars grew wings through drive. natural selection. <laughs> yes. Oh, geez. oh, that's really good. Yeah, we got to do that. We should have that as a segment. <laughs> Three films together. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, let's pick a theme. Uh, okay. So uh, yeah, but I don't know. Do, you, do you have your bumper this time, or do we need Chris? Yes, to yeah. Start I actually, I think I do have my bumper. Uh, okay, because otherwise I can break my guitar out. I should tell you so that you don't waste your time. You can't make me angry. Please spend an hour with him. Okay, so wow. what I wanted I for Robert Ramble's. By the way. What, what, what? They couldn't hear anything there. Your, your music. I heard it. Yeah, you did? Okay, I barely heard that. Then. Yeah. You just adjusted it again, didn't you, Robert? No. Okay, yeah, I, it was all gone. Uh, okay. Anyway. Uh, do you have your Skype auto adjusting again? No. Okay, you. that happened to you one time. I know. Anyway, uh, my segment this week, uh, co-op. So we play a lot of co-op games, the three of us do, and uh, we've had some real misses lately. Um, Real Force, that was a miss. Uh, Warframe was a miss. What are our other misses? There's the one that caused you to be... uh... Oh, that made me want to puke. Yeah, so Warframe made made Chris nauseous, which was exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was the mech game. What was the mech one? Hawken. Yes, Hawken. Yeah, Stephen and I played some Hawken, which should have... I mean, it's robots beating the crap out of each other, so it should have been a great game, kind of mech warrior style. But Chris, the previous week from Warframe, it made him quite quite nauseous. Yeah. And uh, then Stephen and I played... And I had no problems with Warframe. Then Stephen and I played Hawken, and... Oh, man. Afterwards, it was a good two hours where I was dizzy. My head hurt. I felt like I was going to puke. It's what I imagine people feel like with hangovers. Uh, It was just, oh, it was horrid, Um, which I think is what, you know, Chris had gone through with that other game. Don't know why this one got me. That other one didn't bother me at all. Um, Then we played Bro Force where, yeah, where the idea behind it is kind of cool. It's this shared uh, platformer. Uh, I suck at platforming. And if you don't stay on the same screen together, it becomes almost instantly unplayable. So that didn't go too well. And we kept blowing up the world. Um, it was Chris. Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> the world just kept getting blown up and I kept falling. So well, it was no fun. That game needs independent screens. Yeah. Like, that, that almost, we played, every other co op we've played. Yeah. Then we played Payday, Payday. too. Right, the second one, where it should have been better. Uh, we go through the tutorial. We come in. This mission that supposedly is a cakewalk, super easy, and get owned over and over and over again. Uh, maybe I want to put my fist through the screen. Uh, I think Chris was equally pissed off. Steve oh, was yeah. way more mellow about this one. Yeah. Uh, it was, I was in my, I have to learn how to do something phase so i'm actually all about winning i was gonna win it damn it <laughs> yeah. yeah but well, okay there was, I some, punted this was like there was some non, there was some non-obvious bullshit in that game <laughs> yeah 
it, it, it's yeah, just bullshit. So apparently you had to get that stupid ass cell phone from the guy. That was not obvious. All right. Unless there's something that? I missed. What about the stupid packs. Yeah, you grab jewelry. You don't. And yeah, it just. But you had to grab the right jewelry. Yeah, and so it was just. It was not fun. Uh, no. It, it, the game was just. It's just not fun. And then we played some co-op games where we've uh, had quite a bit of fun. Uh, I think we've all really enjoyed the time that we put into Battlefield Three and Four. Yeah. Um, oh, there's new co- uh, new DLC. We got to go back and try that again. Uh, they also apparently this next patch is all going to be about uh, gameplay improvement to make the gameplay better. What is it? Been out <laughs> a year? A year? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, it works now. Here's a buy a new game. No, it doesn't work. But here, here, one finally works. Yeah. I don't know if I want to download the new DLC. It's probably shit. Both of you who are still playing will enjoy it. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, so trying to find the right co-op. Uh, Gears... We loved Gears. Um, Not that last one. That was awful. Well, yeah. You got like caught in the floor or something like that because they didn't. They was like, nah. Here's a game. It's the last one of the series. Yeah. We're not going to try that hard anymore. Oh, uh, there was the disappearing stairs. Yeah. yeah, that's right. God, we must have spent what, two hours at the disappearing stairs. It was the end of the thing. It was like climb the stairs and that was it. The, the game was over. It's like the yeah, last level of Pac-Man or something. Yeah, um, then there was Reach. I think we all liked Reach. Well, mostly. Yeah, Chris and I really liked Reach. Which one was Reach? Yeah, it was fun. Halo. Um, oh, Halo. Story. Yeah. yeah. Everyone dies at the end. Yeah. Not Oops. in the oh, wait, spoiler the other one. <laughs> that was so. Reach. Oh, ODST was the one that you go back and you replay yeah. the different lives of the characters. No, I meant it would, the easiest way I could think given that Stephen played both of them with us to separate the two is the one had Nathan Fillion in it and the other one did. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, ODST had uh, Nathan Fillion. Yeah, but the gameplay, I think, in Reach was uh, significantly better. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was that's a solid game. I really like that one. My favorite Halo game. Um, one, two, three, but then one, two, three, four. Oh, my God, I played six, seven Halo games. That's just wrong. <laughs> yeah, Jack has. <laughs> um, so what I thought is given that we like to do co-op stuff uh, what do we like in a co-op game well are we going to separate co-op versus multiplayer no okay because uh, I think there are different flavors of the same thing for example there's like campaign co-op where you're playing through the campaign single player campaign of game but get to play with your buddies uh, we did that with uh, Fuse Fuse was a lot of fun that way. I think it appealed to our three different styles. You know, Steven got to run ahead, play like a maniac, doing whatever the hell he wanted to do. Uh, Chris sat back and just shot the living crap out of stuff from an extreme distance where I was going, is there a guy on the screen? Must have been. He's dead. Uh, and then I ran around not knowing what I'm doing, like I usually do. Yeah. Um, I could be invisible the whole time. It was awesome. Yeah, so I think there's just the two different flavors of co-op, but I, I consider both those co-op. The difference is that I would say is if it's contained within us, that's a very different kind of game than if it's us and a bunch of, as Chris puts it, 12-year-olds in their basement. Um, you know, it's a very different interactive experience. I mean, yes, we can constrain ourselves that we don't have to interact with the other people when we're playing multiplayer, but it's a lot more variation in terms of our um, who we're playing with, the style that they're playing with. Are they interacting with us at all? Are they actually cooperating? As well as the fact that, you know, I like Battlefield. I played a lot of Battlefield, a lot of Battlefield. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But nonetheless, uh, you know, you basically are, are playing, you know, six or seven or ten maps over and over and over again, right? So you're playing the same thing. So the style, or the only thing that changes is the interactions amongst the people. If you're playing the campaign, you actually walk through, walk through. Uh, and then there's like that middle ground where there's a you know sandbox slash campaign. So like Borderlands has has you can play out there and do whatever you want in sort of whatever order you want, but you eventually move through these steps. Right. Uh, so yeah. I think they're very different in terms of what they actually are uh, and what what. Oh, you I enjoy. agree. Which one? But what do you like? What this is in the what do you like part? Uh, I would say I would really like campaigns more. If we all went at the same speed, 
because uh, I think we play it at very different speeds. If you guys have a sense of what you want to do, you guys run ahead, and I'm just sort of trying to catch up, and then I don't know that you stopped, and I just keep running. And so you're like, oh, look, Steven died, because I didn't know what the hell was going on, and I'm just sort of following you, and okay, we're running. Oh, I caught up. Yeah, and now I'm dead. Then it you up. All right, I'm dead. Okay. Uh, that's very different um, <laughs> than if I was sort of moving through. Because actually, when I play campaigns, I tend to move, move kind of slow, to tell you the truth. Because I'm trying to figure it out. What's the actual... So you'd say. No, I do. I mean, <laughs> honestly. Your slow is a lot faster than my slow. Yeah, you got to know when I play slow, man. But again, if you think of a lot of the campaigns, remember, I've been playing it like after you guys had. So Borderlands, I learned from this. In Borderlands 2, you guys just burned right through, and I was always trying to catch up. Um, I think, Robert, you were already on, like, your second time through or something by the time I actually even started playing the thing. Just because you, like, got into it, really, and just kept playing and playing and playing. Yeah, I got a little addicted to that which, one. Which, again, we, we all have our own thing. I mean, that's the reason why I kind of liked the multiplayer, because at least it's constrained, and I know what to do, how to do it, and I, there's a lot more order to it. Uh, and I think yeah. that's how I can interact with you guys a little bit easier when I'm playing in that way. Um some of it, I think, too, though, is the whole Borderlands thing was when we first started playing as a team together. So the dynamic might be different now that we know each other's play style a little more, know what each of us like to do a little bit better. Um, I still would love to see you as the healer in something. Because uh, yeah. I've never gotten to see that play style out of you, and I know it's something that you've put a lot of time into in, like, uh, DDO, right? Yep. Um, yeah, so I, I, I really like if it has the option of campaign co-op. To me, that's the biggest flaw in Battlefield. The campaigns suck. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. It's just not good. Yeah. Um, and Titan and doesn't even run one out at all. Where you go back to Gears. See, my first exposure to co-op was uh, Chris and I playing, was that Gears 2? I think so. That we played split screen at his house. Yeah, it was Gears 2. Yeah. And that fantastic two-player co-op. Uh, one person went one way, one went another way. You each had to do a different thing, somewhat coordinated. Uh, it was just a hell of a lot of fun. I kind of enjoyed the co-op that we played uh, for Gears 3, but the problem is, is that was specifically designed for four players. Yeah. yeah. It worked yeah. well as two. It would work well as four. For three, there was always one of us essentially playing with a bot. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't really get to play as, as a group. Um, so uh, Borderlands, on the other hand, is more of an RPG. I had all those RPG elements, but it was so early in us starting to play that I think that interfered a lot. You know, Chris and I had been playing some stuff together for a while, kind of knew each other's ways of doing things. We added Steven in, made absolutely no effort whatsoever to integrate him as a member of the team. <laughs> it just said, like, give up. Oh, he's dead again. Get him up. Oh, yeah, his ass is on the floor again. Yeah, he's keeping the floor warm. That's his job. <laughs> that and standing in the fire. Um, Because the whole time he's going, I don't know what the hell's going on. Ah, where'd you guys go? It's like, yeah, we're behind you. Look at your dead ass. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, okay, we're transitioning now. What? I'm still in this battle over here. Did I not be here? <laughs> yeah, so we, we didn't, I don't think we did a very good job of integrating you into the, the group. And then we went into Battlefield, and that's multiplayer. Multiplayer's just you pretty much level all the time. Uh, you know, well, a good, a well-designed multiplayer, it's got a skill component. It's just not all gear. Um, so I, I think that was some of it. So I'm looking forward to uh, some of the newer stuff that's coming out. So it's, they finally seem to be working in... I think some of it's because of the next gen hardware. Uh, some of it is just more evolved storytelling where they're designing for different sized groups. You know, you can have huge groups and little groups and allowing a lot more variety um, that'll fit our style, I think, a little better. Because, um, yeah, I really enjoy the campaign when it's going well. Right. Chris and I finally finished off Tiny Tina. Nice. And that has got to be the, just the most damn fun story. Yeah, I just off the wall story yeah, of, of pretty much almost any game that I've played maybe. Yeah. I mean, and we finished it and we set it to like the lowest possible level. Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't, I, I killed myself a couple times, <laughs> you know, but uh, nothing was even nicking us. 
were just blowing through stuff that was taking us hours at level. Um, yeah, playing it at level was kind of a painful experience. Yeah, and it got in the way of the story, and the story was it a cool did. part. That was the problem. It got in the way of the story. Uh, games that get in the way of themselves are a problem. Yeah. And and that one was. I thought at level, I thought that game got in the way of itself. Yeah, it was a very poor game design because it was it it assumed you had four players. Yes. And ramped for that difficulty. So when two go in at level, it's assuming there's four in at level and it was taking us just forever and running out of ammo to kill stuff. Yeah. Or we had to ramp it down and get no experience whatsoever. So it was it was very bad design choice. So, which I don't know if they ever did fix. But we ended up just know. saying, screw it. We want to see the rest of the story. Yeah. Um, now I can tell you some stuff I don't like. I sort of enjoyed horn mode in Gears for about the first five hours that we did it. The next 20 hours that we did it <laughs> was a slog. And it was just the completionist in me that said, you got to do it. And I think Chris kind of felt the same way. Steven, I think you had a lot more tolerance for it. No, when I we hated finally that. got done. We were kind of I I no, that's what I'm saying, Chris. When we yeah. finally got done and hit 50, it was like we had been paroled. <laughs> you know? No, I, I don't and I it's couldn't like, have and I'm cared not less. Going back. If we never finished it, I wouldn't have cared. In fact, I probably would have had a happier life. <laughs> yeah, I definitely a completion aside to me that I wanted to do it because I wanted to do it. Um yeah, but I don't. I don't feel the need to do it again. Oh God, no, 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 no. I've done one of those things once now, and that box is ticked. There you go. <laughs> there you, go. Um, you know, I, I tend to like <clears throat> the ability to do different things. You know, you see me. I like to hop in vehicles. You know that idea that because I'm. I also play a very uh, bullet soaking kind of. Play style. Um, yes, Mister. I only drive a tank. Yeah, well, unless I'm sitting backseat driver yelling at you. I mean, you can choose. <laughs> you guys hate the way I drive. That's a perennial thing. I just kind of vaguely point the car in the direction and go for maximum speed. What was it? I think it's um, Saints Row. The one of the reasons why I really like that is that if you do crash into something, you do go flying out the front of it. So that would work well for you. You're like, I'm going to get over here really fast. <laughs> <laughs> that can happen in GTA as well. Good. Yeah, that Good. happens. Good. I appreciate that physics aspect at least. Yeah, yeah the rag doll. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm the king of the road rash. <laughs> but I, that, I think a big thing is to have the flexibility. Uh, what I hate in any co op is having to do something on rails. Yeah, on rails sucks. It just. God, I think we played that one game that was a uh, one of the Clancy ones, the Ghost Recons. And I think it took oh, us yeah. forever to get through this one little section because it was this whole coordinated, we have to shoot these guys in this order, but we couldn't turn the right direction at the same time, and we didn't know exactly what we had to do. Yeah. One style, silly. I mean, there should be multiple ways to complete a game, and that bothered me a lot. Yeah. Well, and I don't think any of us are huge on stealth gameplay, particularly. I, I like elements yeah. of stealth gameplay, yeah. but I was never... I don't know if you guys ever played the thief games. That no. was those were games where they saw you, game over. So you know, it was just and it was unrelenting. <laughs> Some of the um, elements of Metal Gear early on, I played Metal Gear for Nintendo, and I played Metal Gear for Metal Gear Solid for PlayStation One. There was some of that sort of if you were detected, it was essentially game over or game got really hard. Yeah. Uh, but there was enough action to keep it interesting. Well, Far Cry. We all played Far Cry, and that had that. Yeah. Extent, there was, yeah, yeah but not an asinine amount. And if you really wanted to go play, you know, I'm taking on the world. You could. You could let them call in infinite reinforcements and, yeah. you know, get owned. Yeah, or you could just shoot open the lock on the tire gauge and let the tiger take care of it for you. Yeah. <laughs> I never figured that out. <laughs> I never did until you said, why don't you just let the tiger go eat all the guys? It was like, yeah. oh. Then you can shoot the tiger because you can get like the tiger skins and stuff like that. And that, that gave you stuff. So then, yeah, it's all, it was all taken care of. Yeah. The new one, apparently, you get to ride around on an elephant. An elephant. Oh, wow. That's fancy. People. 
That's fancy. So I still want to kick people's ass on an elephant. I don't know why. That sounds fun. I will we'll name him Alexander Obama. Alexander the Great or something? I'm not. <laughs> no, that wasn't Alexander the Great. That was. Uh, Hammurabi? That was Hannibal. 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 Yeah. Hannibal. Yes, Hannibal. Yeah. Demonstrating why I'm not a history professor. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's sad that I took a while to remember that. That's one of my useless degrees. Uh, okay, so good co-op. What do you have to have? Chris? Uh, I like the first-person shooter kind of stuff, even though I suck at it. Okay. So, honestly, it has to be fun. And <laughs> well, as yeah. I've and, and as I've gotten older, no, I think I'm I'm laughing, but I think that's an integral thing. I mean, it has to be fun. It's not. Fun. Yeah, and as I've gotten older, Definitely. honestly, I've gotten less tolerant of bullshit in games. Yeah. Seriously, like I really don't want to spend a lot of my time playing, and so if I can't pick it up and have immediately some kind of level of proficiency, it doesn't have to be a high level. I just have to know what the hell's going on. You don't want to cry. That's a good start. That was the problem. It just wasn't fun. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you didn't figure out what yeah. the rules were, which is the whole point, you didn't understand right. the way you had to play. I don't want to spend my time playing games to get good at them, quite frankly. Like, I just got, uh, we talked about this last show, uh, RetroBit um, uh, Nintendo clone, NES clone. And I've been playing some of those games quite a bit. Why? Because... You put the cartridge in. There's no bullshit update that you have to wait 20 minutes for. There's nothing to load, nothing to install. You just have to make sure the cartridge is clean. You stick that in. You're immediately playing. You can play for 10 minutes, and then you can be done. Uh, and so there's none of this sort of, like, investment. Except for and Card Warriors, which you do have to play for hours. A card Warriors take a long time to play. Yeah. Commando. But Commando. I don't have that one yet, but I can Commando. So, yeah, I guess, honestly, I'm looking for... Low bullshit levels. That's okay. kind of what I'm looking for on the games. So quick ramping. Quick ramping and then just run and gun because I don't care about sneaking around. You know, if I want to sneak around, I can do that in real life. I can go hide around a corner or something, <laughs> jump out of people or whatever. <laughs> Shit, you know. What I can't do in real life is like AK-47 and run around with that. Yeah. Um, you you know? in the world, but yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I suppose there are some spots where you can So those 10,000 hours you put into The Sims. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, and that's just, I guess that's how I feel about it. You know, I, 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 I don't want to invest a lot of time in it and uh, I want to just, you know, run around and shoot things. Cool. Pretty simple. Yeah. Steven. Uh, yeah. The fun part matters um, on a couple different factors. You know, there could be fun. Like I think for me, Borderlands was more fun because of the story and the interaction than it was the actual mechanics. Um I like if I could have just sat there and, and, and basically treated it like a, a TV show or something and watched the sections, I think I would have had more fun with that game. The actual activities of running around in circles and, you know, killing rack poop or whatever the hell they had to do over there. Uh, so the mechanics were much less fun to me from that perspective. Right. Um, I definitely am a completionist kind of mentality. So something that I can do and work at and get better at it is something that I like for a distraction aspect of things. Um, allows me to keep my brain sort of active. If I didn't want to be active at all, I'd just go back to watching television. Um, but, you know, from a cooperative or interactive thing, I want to be able to play with, with y'all and, and have a good time. If I'm, if I'm frustrated, then it's not really fun. I think that's how we got turned off when Battle 303, we went back into it and suddenly it was like, well, okay, now I'm stepping out onto the field and I'm dead. You know, mm -hmm. Call of Duty is the same sort of idea, right? You, you step out there and you die. Well, what's not really fun yeah. for me from that perspective because I don't have the twitchiness to do a lot of these things. I am not great at any of these games. Uh, so I want to be able to do something that you have a little bit of a leeway for capability. Right, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, game can't be too complicated. If I want that, I could go back to hardcore MMO rating <laughs> where
to some extent because we do have different play styles. You know, right. there was a time, Robert, when you would just go lay out on a hill for an hour, and, you know, just shoot a couple guys, uh, which I had no patience for just laying there for long periods of time. Uh, yeah. I tried it a couple times and I would shoot and I would shoot and I would shoot and I would not hit anything or I'd nick something and then you'd be like, oh, look, I got him. Like, <laughs> silly. Yeah, but run then out. you'd run around in a tank being Mr. Invincible well, and I'd, I'd get in and it would blow up. You know? I'd be like, oh, wow, that was fun. <laughs> You know, what happened to our tank? Yeah, I killed it. Why do we have a tank? Oh, okay. Well, you just do the Jeep thing. There was that one thing that you could just drive around in a Jeep for hours. That was Battlefield 3. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. You just, in you just 4, you hit, there's like this little tiny, little one-inch bump on the road, and you <laughs> blow up if you hit. <laughs> so, yeah, that, oh, God, that, that made it not fun. I like Battlefield 3 Jeeps where I could just, <laughs> just all the drive over cliffs and... Oh, that was great. The one thing I really liked about 4 more than anything else is that you could blow open walls and suddenly create a new way into things. And I just, for whatever reason, I yeah. did that. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. Yeah. That, I think, is the, um, from the little bit I've heard of the Battlefield Hardline or whatever the hell it is, the Cops and Robbers one. Mm -hmm. It's all about one side is cops, one side are the, you know, hostage takers. And you can make, you know, come in through the roof, come in through the floor, come in through the walls, you know, to breach the thing. I think that would be kind of fun. Yeah. Um, that and they've made these sort of scenarios relatively short. That's good. So you come That's in, good. it's like ten minutes over. Good. Yeah. Do the next one. So if it's going great, you got your bit of fun. If it, if you're totally getting owned, hey, it's ten minutes. It's over. You know, reset. Do it again. Um, I, I like the little first. Very good at taking the. Uh, he kept getting his motorcycle up to the rooftop and go flying off with his motorcycle off of the rooftop. So I thought that was cool. He was doing a building from one building to another to breach with on the motorcycle. <laughs> well, he's Rob Boz. <laughs> King of Sweden. Yeah. So uh, I still think the one where he goes around and steals that guy's pants in whatever the hell game that was. Daisy. That was great. Uh, in the bus simulator. He's the only person I know of that could make a bus simulator interesting. <laughs> bus simulator. No, you cannot have my chains. You will not have your chains. Go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, I think I think we're pretty much on the same page. I'm really looking forward to, we talked about this a little bit pre-show, uh, looking forward to Destiny, mainly because it has instances, so it's us against the game, mm -hmm. but uh, designed for three players. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many games designed for three players? It's kind of a stupid Trying. number of players to design for. That's it. Uh, but given that there's three of us, just yeah. like, hey, cool. Um, and I know, Stephen, you've never been a big fan of Halo, but Chris and I really like the Halo stuff. Um, well, they, at least with the new game, I'm assuming they're not stuck on the Halo controller. That one bothered me so much that you basically have everybody else's one style, except for this one where you're going to be you know, shooting with like your thumb pad or something. Yeah, from what I've heard, you can totally remap everything. God. Yeah, the grenade... Um, being on the left trigger was definitely <laughs> you keep throwing grenades at ourselves. Yeah, thinking <laughs> that you're 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 aiming. Yeah, that's definitely a problem. Yeah, that's why am I not aiming? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I guess you know, I know I, I hear you, Stephen, on that because I guess what I'm saying too is maybe this is like me getting old. I don't know, but I don't want to learn anything new. <laughs> yeah. Like I really don't. Like you, just you know, pick it up and play. Yeah. That's that's I have no left patience. Trigger does this, right trigger does this, this bumper does this. Yeah. yeah. I have no patience for that in games. It's I just bad don't design anymore. now. Now that there's yeah. a convention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you go against the convention, it better be freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. um, well, did you see that, that Steam was going to, you know, they're putting out their Steam box and they had a controller that they were working on. And their first vision on the controller was all interesting and new and different. And the most recent version of them is essentially the same as an Xbox controller. Yeah. Um, they've iterated well, the fact that everybody wants that controller. Yeah, because yeah. the idea was their their initial idea, at least the the one I saw. Instead of the thumbsticks, it was two touchpads. Yep. So you you could get the precision of control that you could get with mouse and keyboard right. with the controller, right. but nobody wants that. No, no, we just want our sticks and our bumpers and our you know. Unless you want your Wii U or whatever, where you have an entire uh, like iPad on your controller. Yeah, and that's that's flying off the shelves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nintendo has enough money that they could just keep releasing these things and still be in the black for another 30 or 40 years. Yeah, yeah. Nintendo just has so damn much money. 
Anyway, I don't want to. Oh, holy crap! I've totally monopolized the show. That's yeah, right. don't worry about it. Um, yeah. So let's go to. No. No, it's just, we'll skip out. No, no we're, I'm we're good. Hit an hour, man. Pass on me yeah. too. Oh, yeah, yeah. this is me reading the show notes. Oh, okay. Pass on me too. Pass on <laughs> me for this week. Fifty-five minutes yeah. already, because Robert's a dumbass. No, 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 no. no perfectly fine. It's a good conversations, man. It means I don't have to yeah. prep something for next week. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and Please. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Re, I don't see these um, segments as being mandatory for every week. Right. No. Well, yeah. Normally, my segment lasts what minute and a half. <laughs> five minutes tops. As I talk about some dumbass thing sorry, that we all go. Last five minutes, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, Chris, end the show before we have to apologize to your mom again. All right. Remember, boys and girls, whatever you do this week, just keep it awesome. The Hour of Awesome is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all the other Jester Cat shows at www.jestercat.com. You can also email the show at hoa at jestercat.com. Catch the show live Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern at www.jestercat.com slash TV. Follow the show on Twitter at our underscore awesome. You can follow Robert at R.S. Macy. You can follow Stephen at S.E. Humphrey. And you can follow Chris at CW Colton. And thanks again to Scott Fletcher for the voiceovers. Go to voice.caroworks.com for more about Scott's great voiceover work.